acting. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can keep in the fun English accents, but this mm. is Hidden Shadows of the Secret Chamber. <laughs> Chambers. No. <laughs> just, just one chamber. I'm no. sorry, everybody. I have to tell everybody that I'm sorry. I just took the longest shower in the world. Well, I was wrestling with a thought in my mind. Yes. His penis. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, that was outside of his mind. <laughs> Unless he was getting his mind. Going. I really didn't want to take a shower. So I wrestled with uh, our husky for like, I don't know, 10 minutes. Oh, dog. I thought you said thought. I did. <laughs> that hoe over there. That's I what they call their dog. <laughs> <laughs> their dog is a thought. <laughs> uh, we have a no, lot. I did wrestle with a thought. Of not taking a shower, and oh, I finally did oh, it. Okay. Oh, yeah. We're proud of you. We're, we're glad because yeah. we're in an enclosed studio space. All right. I mean, it's my room slash studio space space. <laughs> um, okay, so this is this is an interesting episode because Nikansi didn't do his homework and he didn't finish <laughs> Full Metal Alchemist live action movie Netflix. So at a certain point, <laughs> so was mean, that a plug for Netflix? <laughs> <laughs> We're hoping Netflix uh, sponsors us. <laughs> think about it. Think about it. In the I'm future, sorry. You know? I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> so sorry. All so right. what's going to go down in this pod is we're going to get to the part where Nikansi <laughs> watched up to. <laughs> then he will kindly remove his headphones and excuse himself from the podcast. <laughs> and me and Khan will finish it out. He's grounded. I, I'm actually really excited to see what you guys thought of the movie since you finished it. You may audit <laughs> The rest of the podcast. <laughs> um, He's going to be editing and just like, oh, oh, that's wait. the other half of the movie. When, oh. <laughs> when should I do my 20 lashings? <laughs> You'll like, do it when you're good and ready. Um, that was a medieval English accent. Oh, that was nice. Mm, that was nice. Mm, yeah. mm, okay. mm. It was kind of like the villain. Mm. I see. They all come from the same village. They're all yes, <laughs> I'm from the village with all the English villains speaking of that mm, yes there's a really cool R uh, rpg that came out mm -hmm. called kingdom come deliverance well that's so funny because we just got in the segment where we're going to recommend stuff to our listeners to do ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Oh. that's mcdonald's so oh. are you recommending mcdonald's <laughs> no definitely not we might get in trouble for using <laughs> okay. that ringtone <laughs> no, no 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 it's okay it was uh, it was definitely off key. So and it was uh, definitely a parody, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, okay. So really, uh, though, that game is uh, Kingdom Come Deliverance is a really really insane like single player RPG. Um, it's got a huge budget. It's probably as big as uh, Fallout in terms of people are th like losing their minds over it right now. Oh, the hype behind yeah. it. Yeah. They've been so comparing it to Oblivion, haven't they? Yeah, that's what I mean. I bring wow. up Fallout because Bethesda does both of those games. Oh. And Fallout was the newest of the engines. <laughs> yeah. Every time I touch it, it's thunder. <laughs> Sorry, guys. We're having trouble with the mic arms. Um, okay, so it's it's having that big of a, of a uh, reception. Is that yeah, the... it's, uh, I mean, there was definitely Bethesda level bugs when the game first came out. A couple, uh, I want to say it came out in uh, mid January, and uh, I still haven't gotten a chance to play it, but I have uh, obtained it and I will give it a try later. And it's like, oh, there yeah. the bugs are super, super goofy. Like, uh, I don't know if you heard about the Mass Effect bugs for the uh, Andromeda one, but basically the facial rigs were not at all what they were supposed to be. Oh, really? And so instead of having like a normal like face uh -huh. and then a reaction, you had anime levels of overreaction. Whoa. And it's like totally not the right art style. Uh, I've also put in a lot of time in Dragon Ball Fighter Z. Get that game. Get awesome. It. <laughs> okay, here's here's uh, my recommendation. I'm going to recommend a book. Um, it is uh, Forging Divinity by the uh, author Andrew Rowe. Now, here's what's special about this author. He is actually an RPG game programmer and just like all around fan of anime and just fantasy and just RPG games. And when he's not, you know, just devoting hours and days and years of his life to these 
outlets. He is writing these awesome books. Um, so it's like an RPG put into a like book format. But he does a really good job of... Well, let me give you a quick breakdown. It's He's creating like this universe where there's like different countries and, and there's like deities that walk among them and, and there's like these religions where you kind of it's kind of like polygamous religions and you, you either um swear fealty to this god and they'll just kind of back you up and there's just a lot of tension between all the countries and you know they're they're all on the verge of war and there's a lot of uh stuff going on in the background uh that could politically start these wars and it's just you follow these characters where they're just trying to prevent these kinds of things to happen in the meantime using awesome magic powers and they go into details the way that they would in an rpg game which bring um what was his name again and what was the book called because and it sounds like he had like it reminds me of um, a particular game called divinity original sin oh interesting um hmm. his name is andrew roar roar Rowe. andrew Rowe. and the concy cut out the dead space here while we <laughs> type things in our phones oh netflix is getting crazy with their netflix originals this month for um for march uh by the time everybody listens to this there will be f like 50 releases in one month. Oh, yeah, yeah, hold yeah. on. Hold that thought, Nikonzi. We're just going to finish this Andrew Rowe thought. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, bro. So we don't get all over the place. I'm still cutting. Oh, okay, okay. I'll just edit this part out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. cry that yourself works. a little bit. Sorry, just man. Just going to edit this and just. So, yeah, no. Andrew Rowe for the Divinity. I can just couldn't edit find this and just edit this. Couldn't find anything that had to do with Divinity edit Original this. Sin. But those oh. are. Uh, I mean, like, it's a good RPG series. Oh, are yeah. We, wait, and he he did works. You find it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so, done editing. So, he works for um, Blizzard Entertainment, Cryptic Studios, and Obsidian Entertainment. I don't know if you recognize any uh, of those. I mean, Blizzard is one of the biggest game uh companies out there right now i mean they they work with activision they actually oh, acquired activision and they made world of warcraft War warcraft starcraft heroes of the storm is their uh new ip which is or not new ip but it's uh it's combining all of their other franchises for a mobile game and then overwatch is the newest ip and the Nikonsi plays it on ps4 so there's the impressive resume of andrew rowe Who's who's helped in designing Obsidian those games? Entertainment has a bunch of other things. Uh, yeah. Cryptic Studios also has a bunch of, but like Blizzard is kind of the biggest one there. Yeah, so check it out, guys. Uh, I won't rant too much longer on that, uh, but he's an awesome writer. I love his characters. They're so sassy and sarcastic, and there's a lot of humor to it. So sounds like great it's the right level of. Uh, there's no other way to put it. Animated <laughs> so sounds like, oh, yeah. like you. It's sassy and funny. And beautiful and oh yeah, making me blush. <laughs> There's some sexual tension on this podcast, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> All right, I have to witness it firsthand. Conti, <laughs> what's your recommendation of the week? Edit this. Edit this. <laughs> no, Conti, edit this. I just watched in two days, two sittings. A show called Everything Sucks on Netflix. Oh, it that is one's really good. Really? Yes, it's so good. Break it down for me, Nikonsi. Convince me that I should oh watch my this show. I am so excited to convince you to watch this show. <laughs> I was actually surprised because uh, I have t a list of things that I want to read and watch, and it's endless. And I finally just sat down and I was like, oh. I'm going to watch this one. This looks okay. <laughs> Instead of adding to the list, just do it. And <laughs> just completely foregoing the list. The reason I fell in love with this show within the first episode is because it is a nostalgia throwback show. Is it to the 90s? Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Everything takes place in the 90s. And as I'm watching these kids interact, I'm like, oh, that was totally my lunchroom. Totally. Same music and everything. Okay, yeah. that's awesome. But it's a it's a very interesting um, comedy drama about uh, this kid who falls 
uh, he once he fought he likes this girl. It's the first girl he actually gets to meet at his uh, his new high school. Okay. And he's a freshman, and she's a sophomore. Um, but turns out that she it, she doesn't really know what she likes until midway through the season, and she ends up preferring girls. Oh shit! But She's it, in lesbianics. But the way they tell the story 100. is so it's so refreshing because it talks about how uh and you see the interaction with her dad uh she's looking at this porno magazine and the first thing her dad says was uh he's like oh honey you don't have to look like those girls don't worry oh like, interesting instead of in, instead of the other way around because it was never a forethought of being gay nobody talked about it oh wow yeah so and come to find out she's like I'm I'm not I'm not trying to be these girls. I'm going to I'm trying to fuck these girls. <laughs> I'm <Yeah>. trying to <laughs> <laughs> But it it addresses a lot of a lot of things that or the way it's done is is uh it's refreshing. It's nice. It's not it's not shamed on. Sweet. And so it, that's and, definitely modern writing. And it also goes into the kid, uh the main character and his creativity and finding himself as all the other characters and yeah it's just really nice every everybody that you start to not like in the show ends up you end up understanding them in the end and you end up liking all the characters that's really cool all yeah, of them that's yeah. really that's that's definitely like more modern writing but also it sounds like they spent a lot of time making sure that the frame was right so that you feel that nostalgia pull back because i mean i'm technically a 2000s kid not a 90s kid <laughs> crazy thing crazy thing is the level that these kids are on for their acting they're you, like you weren't even thinking of they're like, like 15 16 year olds like doing phenomenal acting that's not, cool yeah they're not 15 yeah, or 16 you know year what? old disney and, actors and the 90 oh god don't even <laughs> or nickelodeon sitcom kid actors it just i'm so glad that we are coming back to that era of good kid actors because 90s if you go back and watch 90s films and and like late 80s films fuck those kids are great actors so all right well there are three recommendations of the week we got um kingdom what is Come. it Deliverance and also Dragon Ball Fighter Z. Kingdom Come, <laughs> Deliverance can't emphasize enough. Dragon Ball Z Fighter, Dragon Ball Fighter Z. Uh, Andrew Rowe, um, Forging Divinity. Forging Divinity. Thank you, Khan. And then uh, what, everything sucks. Everything sucks. You everything can, does. And the the uh, cinematography for the show is amazing. Music, amazing. Everything. There you go, guys. All right, we're gonna come into this one. Uh, so we are of. Uh, uh, did best you did, bet you didn't know we're big anime fans so <laughs> <laughs> we had to watch the uh full metal alchemist live action movie that just no, came out what's that except for nakansi except for nakansi okay so what i love anime here's what <laughs> no got him here's what's gonna happen guys this episode we're we're punishing nakansi again i'm like, sorry like i was he, not really sorry he has to he has to i have a strong point quiet. of view on this movie Okay. Well, I, actually, we already covered this in the beginning. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> listeners, less editing. Just <laughs> remember, he's excusing himself up to the part where he watched. Um, okay, I'm so, watching it right now. So let's <laughs> let's answer the question that is on everybody's mind: live action. Live action. Did the director follow the original story from 2002? Not the original, like. But the first installment the, of the anime. The first anime that came out, which is less like the manga. That's the thing. Or did he follow Brotherhood? The answer is neither. Um, director uh, Fumihiko Sori uh, just kind of took pieces of the entire anime and just put them in a pot and stirred it up. And they're like, and he poured it out. And here's your movie, motherfuckers. That Which, makes sense. I mean, I can definitely, I can definitely get that. Uh, but if I did have to choose a side, I'd still side with like two thousand one, two thousand two anime. He is, uh, I mean, 
throughout the movie, it uses much brighter and much more com- comedic effects as well. And I think musically, the it was a much brighter tone for most of that. Oh, so you think, is your impression of the 2002 anime brighter than Brotherhood? Oh, yes. Really? 2002 anime is really bright. Brotherhood is much more, as intended, close to the manga. Uh And so there are specific, uh, there is a specific tone that they go through for most of the, like, first half of the Brotherhood anime, which is really, I mean, honestly, side by side, they're pretty much the same. There's really little uh, differences going on. And at a certain point, I think it's uh, Pride and Envy and Sloth all get mixed up as different characters for the uh, for the 2002 anime. And so that's what separates it from the, uh, the Brotherhood from the 2002 anime, from the manga, and even from this. Yeah, I mean, it's just, I mean, everybody's listened to this. Of course, you guys have, by now, watched both animes. Or at least watched one of them. At least one <laughs> of them. Watch Brotherhood. Do it. It's better. I'm sorry, I'm more of a Brotherhood it, it, fan. It, no, I, as much as I like both of them, they're highly different, uh, different shows. Because the route that the 2002 anime takes doesn't come back to the manga for, like, a long time. Oh, yeah. So, um... To the movie. In- Wait, one more thing uh-huh. on the manga. I read that uh, the anime of 2002, it only got different near the end because the manga wasn't finished. Yeah, yeah. the way the story's wrapped up. It's like yeah. 12 episodes, I swore, I thought, though. Like, it really feels different by that point. Mm, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like, by 12 episodes? But 2002 like- anime is like over 40 episodes, like 59 or something. Well, and then it's more than that. I'm what I'm saying is it's like a, it's like a, it's a huge chunk. That's a huge chunk of time still. No, no, no twelve episodes. Yeah. Is pretty, there can a lot of shit can happen. Mm. That's a series. That's a Except season for, in Dragon for, Ball. S- for some. I know. Fuck. <laughs> Goku released the power, the spirit bomb that he started power or powering up like seven years ago. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. I do love how Brotherhood is widescreen and the art is just so much crisper. Yeah, because I really love Full Metal Alchemist's art. I think it is so good. It is a really, really good art style. One of the best. Super cool. So my humble opinion. For the artist to be able to take Brotherhood and have his this, I feel like Brotherhood is his true vision. Yes, which it is. Yeah, we feel like there was more passion behind it. Uh, and it was just the art is amazing. Okay, that's it. (laughs) Okay, so we're I I, I'm gonna go into my impression of the movie. No, we're gonna move on. Sorry, Alex. I've already given mine, and Myron's grounded, so he's given his two cents. <laughs> Wait, I haven't given my two cents yet. Uh, you know what? Then let's let's take let's get Myron's impression first because he's gonna have to excuse himself. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Myron. From the hour and two minutes that you've seen of the movie, the hours two hours. I mean, the movie's two hours and how many minutes? Like, I couldn't. I want to say ten. Oh, okay, ten. okay. So tell us, what was your impression of it? At first, when I started watching it, I was like, whoa, this is cool. This is just like the beginning. And then it started to get too cheesy. Too cheesy. Like too sappy? I, yeah, With well, the emotions? I could, I could not get into his wig. His wig was throwing me off. I thought it was... I mean, Thank I've seen you. Worse. That wig was awful. Thank you. It, was yeah. awful. it was bad, but I've was seen awful. worse. Some of the, the locations that they were using, though, looked so good. Yeah. And then they had some mediocre CGI, which threw it completely off for me. I think that was my biggest complaint is that um, they had really mediocre CGI for Ed, or not Ed, Al. Uh, I didn't a think Al was scenes, too bad, I, though. A lot of the scenes, I felt like it was like... I'm talking about other parts. I mean, some of it, I was like, oh, okay, that looks cool. That looks good. Like, at the beginning when the 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 Brock pillars are coming out, mm-hmm. oh, you're talking- some of it looked good. And then some of it looked awful. I was like, this is a weird blend. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they made it so cheesy. Like, I was watching a parody of an anime instead right. of how, like, comic book movies uh-huh. are like, oh, okay, that is cool. That's a live action comic book. Or at least, like, on some level, you're like, this is a good way to take a scene. It yeah. Still but feels- when, when I was watching yeah. Full Metal Alchemist, I was like, okay, that's cool. Okay, that's not so cool. Ugh. Okay, it was hit or miss. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm okay with that. They had okay. some, they did have some really amazing shots where it was just a recreation of the anime and I was like, 
Whoa. That looks legit. Whoa, bro. Whoa. Bro. Dude. Dude. Whoa. I did like Al, though. Al's, uh, his voice was cool. Mm. I like his But I, you, I think can't, the voice you can't tell fine. us what you thought about the voice. I watched, you listen, watched it in friggin' Spanish. <laughs> no wonder. <laughs> I watched it in Spanish. Pause for a second. Did you at least watch regular Full Metal Alchemist in Spanish at any point? No. Or, or Brotherhood? No. Like, I watched it all in English. There you go. I think that throws off your your overall review of it. No, I, I've watched plenty of movies in Spanish, so. Uh, I no, I mean like like the, I feel like the Japanese voice actor for Alphonse was on point. I felt like that was, like in my memory. Oh, I wasn't upset yeah. with the voice actor for Al in Spanish too. He was really. That's good. that's the thing is like I took a moment to like check the German or not the German one. I think it's French. There's uh -huh. another language. There's dad actually had a comment about that why is it that they had all these other languages except for english when it's well, even dad knows that full metal alchemist is like a dubbed anime yeah so it was really weird all right nikansi what else do you have to add before we excuse you i'm probably gonna finish it just to, <laughs> but i don't know i couldn't get into it I, yeah. so agreed right. though the first half of the movie cheese ball the second yeah. half of the movie, still cheese ball. Why? Oh, is it? Because <laughs> I haven't seen the second half. So I mean, go and finish it, man. You'll no, finish it. Not, we'll finish. not right. now, right but now. <laughs> you can sit and listen to our opinion unless right. you think it'll ruin. <laughs> no, I want to hear your opinion. All right, cool. We're going to shut you off. Goodbye, everybody. everybody. Say bye to Nikanti. Click. Bye. Click, click, click. Boom. You don't All have right, to say it on. when you turn off your mic. You can just... <laughs> anyway um okay so my impressions um edward he took notes <laughs> i did i did homework guys damn so i thought edward was was um he they did pretty good he the actor did a good job of portraying edward he has this kind of like cocky sarcastic demeanor winfrey they made her the typical dumb Japanese girl, which is really unfortunate because we've been watching so many things where females, even uh, female supporting actors, get like actually just good roles. Like, it's it's great. Yeah, and this was just they took the like things about Winry that you did like th they took it from the 2002 anime. It is, she's just there. She's just dumb. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. really interesting for a long a lot of the time. And I mean, in her defense, she was really cute. And she was really expressive, and it's still cheesy. Though. Again, you know, just like, a typical like it's cheesy female that's, role. That's the problem, and that's and that's depressing. And I think that um, visually, that was Win Winry. I like saw it, and I'm like, oh, sick! That's Winry. For I knew sure. right away. And yeah. then like the lines throughout the movie, I'm like, oh no, please don't just don't talk. Maybe don't talk. I don't know. Maybe you'll see can more we, like. Can we, <laughs> Can we just no? <laughs> yeah, it was disappointing because I think um, Winry was the backbone of Edward and Alphonse, and and I think they kind of took away. She still played that role uh, to some degree, but at the same time, she kind of played the role of like she just happens to be everywhere where Al and Edward are. Well, I mean, in my in in defense of uh, director's choices, like mm -hmm. when you're condensing this huge story that's really really loved like cutting it in certain places i still think that she like you said was operating as this connection this backbone of a brotherhood <laughs> but uh i mean like they just dumbed down the character too much yeah way too much like there was it was just a really weird poor choice okay um colonel mustang was very Eh. I felt that he was a five and a half or a six. Mm -hmm. Like he was doing what I would expect of a live action Colonel Mustang and his delivery on some of the stuff was really good. But then at the same time, it was like certain scenes were just like, oh yeah, that's Colonel Mustang. But you know what? Colonel <laughs> was like, he was he badass. Had his, he has his badass. He has his serious side, of course, but he also has his, his wit, wit, his character, his charisma that, his, I think for the writing was like, how do they fit in that character? Yeah. And again, like sometimes it's okay to 
break the movies up. Don't try. Don't be Pirates of the Caribbean five, and Which try to like, fit like all five movies into all one. Four movies from before, and give you a little something extra. It's like yeah, whoa. stop. <laughs> we just have one plate. You're creating a mountain. This isn't. But I, I don't know. Watched it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, same here. Okay, the character. And, and the actor, Giotta uh, Sato, the one who did the best at uh, portraying his character, Maze Hughes. Rest in peace, Hughes. Rest in peace, Hughes. I feel like that's where the budget went. <laughs> that's where all the budget went into Maze Hughes. This actor oh, must oh, have been oh, the oh. most expensive. And Al's CG. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> because I think they did such a great job of like making you fall in love with mace Hughes. i think that was the um one of my biggest highlights of the movie was knowing that spoiler alert for those who somehow haven't finished either brotherhood or full metal alchemist what are you doing here anyway <laughs> but hughes's death i felt like leading up to it just knowing that he was gonna die was like how are they gonna make me connect to hughes for a third time yeah sorry and well, fourth time because i read i read a good portion oh of the okay how are they gonna make me connect to hughes for a fourth time and that guy was Hughes. He was 100% that was amazing. Hughes. I I think he played every you know every dimension of what Colonel Hughes or what is it? was he a colonel? He was a captain. Captain Hughes was. Hmm. And um I think he was the best part of the movie for me. Uh my argument for the best part of the movie is everybody's favorite scene is finding out um the little girl and the dog, Alexander, are one. Oh man, that was very dramatic. <laughs> that was a huge highlight. And again, how are they going to make me feel this scene for a fourth time? Oh my God. It's a tall order. Fuck Tucker. Every single time that character, <laughs> I see him, I'm like, you bastard. You bastard. Who does this <laughs> to their child? <laughs> or if you were watching it in Spanish with me, bastardo. Bastardo. <laughs> <laughs> um all right um so in essence um i think the movie like i'm gonna give it an overall rating of like a five greatly disappointed but if you are a full metal alchemist fan go watch the movie uh i'm gonna give it a six i i thought it was i mean to be fair i'm easily entertained even if i was being like more uh more strict and uh, study, studious on the movie. It's it was easy entertainment for me. I loved the music. I loved the CGI. I thought that everybody was animated, like expressing themselves in a in that kind of fashion. But I still not think that literally, guys. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, overall, the movie still had a lot of faults. And I mean, at the end of the day, it's fifty times better than the Death Note live action from Netflix. Or so. a better, better than the uh, Dragon Ball. Yeah, that's the thing. Evolution. Like, we pretend that that's not real. Yeah, <laughs> that, yeah, that didn't. Uh, that never happened. Like on what? the list of all of it, you know, Jackie Chan Adventures live action. I mean, the Medallion. That's a good movie compared to all of those. It really is. I but think. Uh, <laughs> I think that it's nice for fans to see something live action. Yeah, but people shouldn't come into the Full Metal Alchemist world on this movie no yeah it should be an afterthought <laughs> they should start with uh the manga or brotherhood yeah and then go back and watch 2002 just as so you can see where it started from and appreciate that this 51 long episode series was able to uh, catch and catch enough attention to create to recreate it yeah into yeah. brotherhood um but Really, there's so many bad anime movies, and they keep making bad anime movies. Why? It's really well, why didn't they just it, yeah. learn from Kenshin and make some good anime movies? Oh, okay. I was is, like, <laughs> Kenshin was the best one. Is, Kenshin is was amazing. Was gonna, this is yeah. what I was gonna bring up though is that, like, in defense of this movie, this is not the worst by far. It no, it definitely messed up in places, but I am overall still happy that they did this live action movie and they plan on doing a sequel so we'll so see what hopefully goes hopefully they learned right i just can't get over that wig i can't stand I'm just, it yeah, i'm just i'm just really was... i'm really <laughs> they just dye his hair i would rather you just dye his hair or just grow your hair out bro why wear a wig i don't get it why okay 
Why? I think they were extensions. Why? <laughs> Why? Why? I expect Why? weaves from other movies, and this is not one of them. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Stop it before you say something racist. Um, Too late. Uh, I, I just, I'm scared of the sequel because they took the big climactic end to Brotherhood with all the s- spoiler alert. Um, yeah, just hit your 30 second fast forward part for this. Um, they took all the immortal dolls and just threw it into the first movie. And it was well, just like, in what? I mean, again, I'm okay with them condensing it because I have ideas of where they could go with it. And so specifically for this one, right? Did you watch the animated movie, uh, Rising Star of Shambhala or something like that? I forget the full name. Actually, Mario can pull it up. Conquest of Shambhala. Yeah. So in that one, technically taking place after 2002, I, I guess 2002 one. Um, I might have. Was it on Netflix for a while? Probably is still on Netflix. Netflix. Actually, everybody who's watching Full Metal Alchemist, they have both of them on Netflix. Hey. They do. Yeah, which is cool. Get your, get your marathons in. <laughs> All right. Let's um, not... Oh, oh no! Yeah, yeah. No, Get to your without point. Without spoiling Sorry. too much of this, uh, at the end of the 2002 anime, um, Al gets his body back. Yeah, but Ed goes to a different dimension. Yeah. Oh, I remember Ed. that movie. And so, yeah, that's the whole point of that movie. He is that he gets pulled into something that's more akin to our actual universe. I think it's like technically our universe, yeah. huh? Yeah. And so he's there during their uh, like our World War Two, and he's working with aviators and stuff in yeah. J- japan G- german panini wherever Ooh, german yeah. panini on that note speaking of art <laughs> <laughs> side note uh heroic legend of arslan is the same manga writer and artist of full metal alchemist it's oh. also really good and it's amazing it's really really good <laughs> amazing <laughs> art crazy in-depth story I love it. I gotta look you in the eyes when I say that. Oh, okay. All right, guys. It's really, really good. Guys, Khan is scaring <laughs> me. I need to go watch it right now. Okay. I'm going to go over our... Let's go over our what the fuck moments. Do you guys have any what the fuck moments? The weave. Okay, My, the weave. The, the Kansi's, uh pretty yeah. much entire first half of the movie is... Why? Could the weave. <laughs> okay. No, I like. let's keep them short. Let's keep them really short. But I, I, do, been... I do love... Oh just one last thing i just love how they recreated the scene of when they were kids it still hit home it was like yeah i'm mm. no, no you didn't no, think I'm, it was you, good no i this is this is what i mean like those kid like, actors were so adorable this is what it was what i was talking about is like on certain aspects i'm more stringent on others it's like i'm just excited that they made a live action and so that's why I'm letting it get away with a six because there's definitely problems with it, but it was way better than Dragon Ball Evolution. <laughs> so what uh, was your what the fuck moment? My biggest what the fuck moment is, again, how did they for a fourth time convince me that I think it was like Elizabeth is her name or like the little girl oh, and yeah. Alexander. I like, how are you going to convince me that these two are going to be okay? Oh, they're so cute. They're gonna die, and then they become a chimera, and I'm like, "This is fucked up." This is. Yeah. They did it again. I hate them. <laughs> and then Scar comes and kills him. But wait, what the fuck? There was no Scar. There was no Scar. Also, no Major Armstrong. My favorite character in this anime. Major I Armstrong think- is a badass. I yeah. love Major Armstrong. Can we just have a flex off? <laughs> just oh. <laughs> you can feel it. God, pop the blood vessel. <clears throat> um. But yeah, in my Major ass. Ar- um, uh, again, full metal. I think this is where uh, I was really excited. Was for the characters that did show up, despite the weave. I think that the character designs uh, for costumes were really good. Besides the weave, yeah, less like, could have been sexier. <laughs> but that's just my purpose. Hawkeye was amazing. Hawkeye was great. She was Hawkeye gorgeous. Was so hot. She was very gorgeous. But uh, again, this good, is, good I, I texted you guys like everybody in this movie is hot. <laughs> they like, made oh, they made Gluttony pretty creepy. Yeah, Yo. he was a creeper. Good choices. <laughs> All right, <laughs> look at that shot. Look at that. That's not. Look at that. Okay, now watch Brotherhood shot. Now All right, this shot. they were pretty adorbs. Yeah, also, so Al adorable. has such a strong jawline. Um, 
my badass moment was in the beginning, the opening scene, the buildup to Edward Elric's first nose transmutation circle transmutation, where he clasps his hands together for the first time in the movie. Which is, honestly, you're listening to this podcast, you you know, that's an iconic thing. Like, yes. The scene of just... And he busts out that just f- very familiar badass spear that he always does that was cool that was really cool mm-hmm. yeah your badass moment that it that was it that was it that's as far as i made it okay <laughs> mr khan i it's kind of hard to say i i again there's a lot of cheese in this movie there's a lot of things wrong and i'm easily entertained all at the same time but i have to say that one of my badass moments one of them is Hawkeye leading the troops into shooting down all of the uh, all the dolls. I thought that that was like, damn! I knew I loved Hawkeye, but damn, <laughs> <laughs> spicy. One thing um, <laughs> about um, the the movie, I felt like they didn't hit. There was some really deep conversations that that uh were delivered the, wrong the brothers had in the anime that yeah. they just didn't have like some of them in the anime you're watching them, and they're like oh shit that was deep yeah i think the director could have given them more direction in in those scenes because here's the thing in the anime the thing that really i don't know about you guys got to me is the emotion the raw emotion yeah. behind everything that's going on why is Roy so angrily trying to kill Lust or when that, that epic scene when he finally kills her is just, you, you just it's so triumphant for not just, you know, uh, Roy Mustang, but for us is because, because you, he killed, yeah. you know, uh, he, Maze. Yeah, he, or he, he avenges Maze. He and avenges that's a really Maze. Big, that's on, a really big thing that like... And I'm being inaccurate. It was... Uh, envy my bad yeah yeah but still but um bringing that up too is like the a lot of the like missed emotional tones Mm -hmm. i think is a director choice um that he he just happened to miss or did it was a bit wrong yeah it was uh but it's just a director's choice that he happened to do wrong or missed out on and maybe they didn't have the writing because again to be like to defend the movie some more like you take something that everybody likes and everybody else is going to have other expectations. Like, like a big example is 2000, I think it was like five or 2006 incredible Hulk with Edward Norton as Bruce Banner. Mm -hmm. That movie was terrible. It was absolutely terrible, but there were moments in that movie that I like was just easily entertained and I was having fun. I thought that one was just worlds better than the first one. Oh, it was. Yeah. The first one was just and that I, was just weird. And I think that just attests to Edward Norton's acting ability. Right. His But anyways, we're we're getting off subject. That, that's but but the that, point that we were going on for that one was just uh I mean, if you take something that everybody really enjoys is really passionate about and you do something that in your vision is right and then everybody's going to criticize it in the wrong way. It's tough. Uh, he yeah. took on a tall order, um, and I think that a six is fair for what he gave us. Because I was, I mean, I would still recommend fans to watch it. It could have been better. I'm gonna hold <laughs> you over the flame, Fumihi- <laughs> Fumihiko. Uh, forgot your last name, mm-hmm. director. You yeah, step up your game if they bring you on for the next project. Um, anything else you guys want to add or? Watch Brotherhood. Watch Brotherhood. Go 100%. watch. Percent. Go watch Kenshin. And oh yeah, yeah watch, watch, watch Kenshin. the Kenshin live action. Yes. Set aside six hours. <laughs> no, you, but you really, watch them you should, one at a time. Uh, uh, I would say that the the last two are, are you should definitely set aside the four hours to watch them back to back. Is so much better. That is how they filmed those last two. Yeah. Like well, it just is so much better when you get to watch it like that, or at least a day like a day apart. Set aside the time. Instead of like at release, they what I think they released it three months, four months after the second movie, the third movie came out, and it was uh, too long of a wait. It was weird. <laughs> um. Well, guys. Um. I'm gonna let's see. 
come visit us vi visit our page on uh on instagram hstsc33 um on instagram uh we do a lot of fun things over the week um super interactive so guys leave some comments give us some likes and your feedback and and we'll respond to them and, and you guys can find our podcast from there like we're, us on facebook yeah we're on facebook now uh it's a long name was it again hidden shadows of the secret chamber just one. Oh, hmm. and um that's our name <laughs> yeah uh, it, it could fit on facebook also i got affiliate on twitch which means the more people you, that come out and support me the closer i get partners and you should probably yeah. help me out and if not, you can just stop by and have a good time. I've been singing Take On Me. I can hit the high note, except not this last two days. I hurt my throat. <laughs> um, he's still coughing up blood. No. Um, can we put the link up on uh, on I, Facebook? I linked it to Facebook. Good, um, good. Because Instagram is being a whore, and they only let us put one link. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but go to our Facebook, like our page, and then from there you guys can find um, Khan's uh, Twitch feed, the link to his Twitch feed um that's that's it for us today guys freaking love you hidden shadows of the secret chamber see you in a few minutes if you are playing our playlist yeah peace